Okay, so another basic console app for week five, but this is a object-oriented programming question as well. So uh, the, the question says, create a class called sandwich, and data fields include a string for the main ingredients, such as tuna, a string for the bread type, such as wheat, and a double for the price, such as 499. So main ingredient, bread type, and price. Include methods to get and set the values for each of these fields, and save the class as sandwich.java. Then there's another little part of it down here to do with uh, creating a tester class which invokes, uh, creates, creates objects based on sandwich and invokes the methods. So it's all object oriented and uh, it's very much what we're doing for the rest of the term, uh, creating our own objects and our own data classes and things. So let's start with a sandwich. Public class sandwich. And data classes don't have main methods. So the main, the main method will go in the test sandwich, this, this, this class here. All this one is going to contain is the methods to work with a sandwich. To dart, the data for a sandwich and the methods to uh, help, help users work with sandwiches. Okay, so we've got a string for main ingredient. And it's going to be, we'll keep all our data private. Private string main ingredient. Ingredient such as tuna and a private string red type and a price private and it'll be a double price one ingredient bread type price okay cool or we'll, we'll keep all the data private so nothing outside of our class could corrupt it or change it and we'll just create a basic constructor public sandwich and that's just going to so this is automatically run when we create an object of type sandwich and we just want to initialize the class data make sure it's all set to something that's reasonable so set the main ingredient to double quotes or, or a blank string bread type to a blank oops to a blank string and the price to zero there are there are other sorts of constructors we can have as well and we'll be talking about those later in the term. But for now, we just have a default constructor just to keep everything in a clean state when we set up an object. Okay, so we're starting with a nice clean slate. Uh, that's the, um, the, the question says to create get and set methods for each of the fields. Okay, so we'll do the getters or the accessors. Getters, accessors. And that first method there, we must put a comment there as well. So that's the, con the default constructor default constructor okay so getters and setters we'll have a public string get and we'll get the main ingredient it's got to be uppercase M round brackets and that's just going to return the main main ingredient return main ingredient okay so public string it's got to be a public method so it can be called outside of the class it's returning a string because that's what the data type is the main ingredient and it's just going to say return main ingredient. Usually, usually the accessor methods are very simple methods. Just, just return the value, return the value. Sometimes I have to do calculations and things, but usually just return the values. So we'll copy that and paste it and paste it again. So we've got three copies of it. One, two, three. And we'll make one of them to bread type. So that's the group main ingredient. This one's going to be bread type and make bread type. And it's going to be uppercase B. And this one down here is going to be get the price, and that's a string as well because bread types a string. And this one's going to be get price, and it's going to be uppercase P, and it's going to return the price. And the method's going to be of type double because price is of type double. Okay, so return the price, which is a double. That's our getters. Just return main ingredient, return bread, return price. Now we're going to do the setters. Okay, and the setters are also called mutators. And these allow uh, people working with your data class to change the values of class data items. Okay, so the accessor methods were, were get, get, get. Okay, and the set of methods are all set, set, set. Okay, so let's let's create one. And set of methods are void; they don't return anything. So it's public void set main ingredient. Okay, so change the get to a set. And make it a void method. Uh, 
Let's pop another blank one in there, just space things out. And what we want to do is string new main ingredient. So whatever whatever is getting getting passed in, and we'll say main ingredient equals new main ingredient. Okay, and we'll copy that and paste it. Control C, Control V, Control V. So we've got three copies of it now because we're just going to change it now to bread type, and we're going to say set bread type. And we're going to have a new bread type. It's going to take in a string parameter because bread type is a string. And we'll say bread type equals new bread type. Okay. We're taking in a string here because main ingredient is a string. And we'll set main ingredient, which is our class item up here. This is our main ingredient. We'll set main ingredient to the new main ingredient passed in. And here we're setting bread type, so new bread type. So we're setting bread type, which is our class start item there. We'll set bread type to the new bread type. Okay, now set the price. New price, uppercase P. And it's going to be set price. And we're going to say price equals new price. Uh, except that's going to be something else, doesn't it? So our price was a double. So the new price must also be a double. So that we're setting a double to a double. So set price takes in a new price, and whatever that new price is, we're just setting the price, which is our class data item up here. We're setting the price equal to the new price that was passed in. So we're not doing any validation. We're not doing any checks or anything like that. If this is a real application that was being used in industry or by a client, we will be doing validation on all of those. For example, the main ingredient can't be blank. The main ingredient must be one of these that's in a list that we, we have in our shop, for example, tuna and roast beef and whatever. So it's got to be something that we actually sell. And the bread type's got to be non-blank and it's got to be a bread that we sell and the price has got to be uh, you know, less than $10 and greater than $2 or something. You know, if your cheaper sandwich is $2. So all of these methods here would have lots of validations in them if, 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 this, if this is a real application. And we'll be doing that later in a term. But for now, we're just going to believe whatever the user passes in that it's valid and you set the main ingredient to the new main ingredient that was passed in. Bread type to the new bread type. Price to the new price. Okay, so that's our data class. We've got a default constructor just initializing everything. We've got our getters which just get the class data and return it back to the calling method and we've got our setters or mutators which change class data. That's why they're called mutators because they're actually changing the values of class data. Okay, so they're mutating the class object. <laughs> Bit of a nasty word. They're really changes, not mutators, but anyway, that's what they're called. Okay, so we've done that method. We've done that part A. That wasn't too bad. Uh, let's look at part B. Okay, so part B says create an application named test sandwich that instantiates, instantiates one sandwich object and demonstrates the use of the set and the get methods. Save the application as test sandwich.java. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll go file new, file save as. I'm in the right folder, I'm in my sandwich folder. Make sure there's not a space on the front there. Test sandwich.java. That's good. Make sure it comes up with dot java, not dot java dot, dot java. Nothing funny going on there. It's not dot java dot text or anything like that. Okay, so public class. I'll just paste in that test Java again. Oh, sorry, test sandwich. Take off the dot Java. And this is a tester class. So this is the one that's going to test out our data class for us. Help us test it out and make sure it works. So this one does need a main method. Public static void main string in square brackets args. So look, look, we've been doing all term. This is where our main method lives. Okay, so what we want to do is create objects. Well, the question just says one object, so we'll create one object. Okay, so sandwich, uh, sandwich, Mike's lunch equals new sandwich. Okay, so this is creating the object just like we do with scanner. We say scanner keyboard equals new scanner. Here I'm creating a sandwich object, sandwich Mike's lunch, 
equals new sandwich. You can call it whatever I like. It doesn't have to be Mike's lunch. It's just whatever. Okay. And now that's the object we use to, to interact with the sandwich class. Okay. So Mike's lunch dot set. So we've got all these set methods here. There's no point calling the getters yet because we haven't, we haven't got any data in there. It's just blanks and zeros because our constructor's already run. Okay, so let's do a set main ingredient. Dot set main ingredient. Uh, it's going to be chicken. And let's do a set bread type. It's set bread type. So it's Mike's lunch. Set bread type. Mike's lunch. Dot set bread type. And I'll line everything up so it's nice and neat. And I like multi-grain, multi-grain bread. Okay. And a price. Set price. And it's a it's a three dollar fifty sandwich. Okay. So the set main ingredient takes a string. So I'm passing through a string. So that chicken gets passed through here as a new ingredient, new main ingredient. And my main ingredient gets set to chicken. Okay. And then when I call the set bread type, multi grain gets passed through to the set bread type method. So multi grain comes in through here as new bread type, and the bread type gets set to multi grain. And then I do a set price, set price to $3.50, and that $3.50 gets passed through to the set price method. So it comes through here as new price. And the price of the sandwich is set to the new price, which is three dollars fifty. Okay, so we're, the, we're 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 changing the class data for the for Mike's lunch object, but we're doing it using the set methods or the mutator methods that are provided with the class. We're not getting direct access to the data; we're doing it via the methods, which is a much safer way to do it. Okay, and let's call the getters now. So now we can actually get the data back out again. So we'll do a system, system dot out dot print line. Mike's lunch is plus, and I'll get a Mike's lunch dot. Let's see what we can do. So have a look at our accessor methods. Get main ingredient. So get main ingredient. So Mike's lunch get main ingredient plus on plus and we'll get the bread type so Mike's lunch dot get bread type so Mike, Mike's lunch get main ingredient Mike's lunch so it's going to say chicken on multigrain uh, multigrain I must say multigrain bread just to make it a, a more complete plus uh, and then at a cost of Plus, and then we'll get Mike's lunch dot get price. Okay, so Mike's get price, and then we'll close our. In fact, one thing I like doing often is I like lining that opening brace up with, or that, that opening bracket up with this one, and then it's going to have a semicolon at the end. Okay, now we could also format that to two decimal places, which would be a nice thing to do, so let's do that. I'll line all this up so it's nice and neat. I'm really fussy about my code. I know I've got problems. Okay, so string.format. We've done this before. String.format. And we put double quotes there, comma, and then a round bracket after that. So there's a round bracket here around all that. And then the opening round bracket and closing round bracket there. Now inside this format, it's a, it's a, it's a double value coming back. So it's a, it's a double number. So we go percent. Percent means give me the data, and then we got dot two f. Okay, so dot two f means two decimal places, and it's a floating point number or a real number. Okay, so whatever whatever double comes back, it's going to be formatted with two decimal places from that format string. Okay, so we should see uh, chicken on multi Mike's lunch is chicken on multi grain bread at a cost of and it should be $3.50, $3.50 all nicely formatted. And if we want to put a dollar sign in as well, we can put that there. That's probably the easiest place for us at this stage. The cost of dollar, and it will say $3.50. Okay, so let's run that. Control one, 
So everything compiles. When uh, when when you do a recompile here, if this code over here is changed and you've saved it, it will recompile it as well if it needs it. So Java takes care of all the recompiles for you, or, or TextPad. Control one, control two, and there we go. So Mike's lunch is chicken on multigrain bread at a cost of three dollars fifty. So just like we suspected, that's what it's done. Okay, so beauty. If you want to, if you want to create someone else's lunch, um, I want to create uh, Frankie's lunch. So Frankie, Frankie's lunch. So it'll be Frankie's lunch, Frankie's lunch, Frankie's lunch, and he likes roast beef. He's my little doggy, by the way. <laughs> He's my beautiful little doggy. And he likes uh, rye bread, rye bread, and he's got roast beef, and his his, his lunch is three forty five. It's on special. Okay, so we've got Frankie's object being created, Frankie, 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 and then it's Frankie's lunch here, Frankie's lunch, and instead of Mike's lunch here, it's Frankie's lunch, Frankie's lunch, Frankie's lunch. Okay, so these are all Mike Mike's lunch, Mike's lunch, Mike's lunch, Mike's lunch. Down here, we're talking about Frankie, so it's Frankie's lunch, Frankie's lunch, Frankie's lunch. So now we should have two two meals coming out: chicken on multigrain, three fifty, and roast beef on rye at three forty-five. Okay, so that's how it works. Let's do a run and compile. Control one, control two. So Mike's lunch is chicken on multigrain bread at a cost of three fifty. Frankie's lunch is roast beef on rye bread at a cost of three forty-five. So we're getting exactly what we thought, which is good. Okay, all that code's working great. So that's a quick intro to object-oriented programming. It's a brave new world. It's a different way of thinking. You think about everything as objects. So if you think about a sandwich, all of the, all of the data that's to do with the sandwich, like the price and the ingredients and all that sort of stuff, all is controlled by the sandwich class. And all of the methods that deal with sandwiches, like creating them and setting the ingredients and setting the bread and setting the price and getting the bread and getting the price and all that sort of stuff, all of those live in the sandwich class as well. So all of it's self-contained. So if we, needed to, if we needed to create another project with sandwiches, we could just use this in any projects we like. Anywhere we need a sandwich, there's a sandwich class, we're ready to go. So once you've got the objects set up, there's no reinventing the wheel anymore. Everything's just beautiful and reusable. Okay, you might not see it yet. It takes a while for the concept of this to uh, sort of sink in. But believe me, by the end of term, I'm hoping you'll understand it a lot better. We'll go over it a lot as we go. We're going to be doing a lot of object-oriented programming for the rest of the term. Anyway, hope that was useful. Thanks for, thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day.